Hey guys, it's Genohead here. How's everyone doing today? So, for today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the secret weapons in Halo Reach that you normally can't use. Now, much like with the vehicles, uh, a lot of these are either hidden in the game files and you never get to see, or they are there in plain sight. You just either didn't know they were weapons, or, or maybe you did, but you just normally can't use them. Now, Halo Reach doesn't have quite as many uh, unusable weapons or hidden weapons that uh, as it does vehicles, but there's still quite a few interesting ones, so let's get right into it and take a look at what we have. So the first one is June's Sniper Rifle. His own personal sniper rifle. Although, I don't even think June uses this sniper rifle anywhere in the game at all. So it looks like a normal sniper rifle, but it has a green laser sight on it, and I... I don't think I've ever seen that used anywhere at all in the campaign. I don't think June ever uses it in gameplay or in cutscenes either. At least not that I've noticed. Because that laser sight would be very noticeable. <laughs> uh, so let's pick it up. So in first person, there's no there's no first person model for this sniper. And to fire it, I actually had to charge it up to fire a shot. So it's almost like a, almost like a railgun, actually, like from the later Halo games. Uh, but if we were to switch to third person... And then we can see what it's like when we charge it up. And as you can see, when you charge up the sniper rifle to fire a shot, it just like, it just violently shakes uh, your entire Spartan. So it's a, it's a very weird weapon, and I, I don't think it'd be very accurate, uh, realistically, if, uh, if it just violently shakes every time. Uh, if you look closely though, you can see there's also like a red, red laser sight when you start charging up, kind of like with a Spartan laser. Uh, so a little interesting thing there that you can see in first person. Uh, but next up, we have George's machine gun turret. This is his own personal one. And unlike June's sniper rifle, George actually does use this one in-game. And, well, it's uh, I think it's mostly just a regular machine gun turret, except the model is different. Uh, but it's uh, it's exclusive to George, and you never you never actually get to use it in-game, and there's no way to get it from him. Like, believe me, I, I and many people have tried to, like, you know, get George to drop his machine gun turret, but he never does. Uh, next up, we have the Hunter Fuel Rod Cannon. This one has no model, it's invisible in both first and third person, but it is a usable weapon, and even though it's invisible, it can technically be picked up. But, obviously, you'll never be able to do that in-game in without modding it to, uh, to make it player usable. But, it is technically player usable, and this is what it's like. Next up we have the monitor beam. This one's a mysterious weapon, and actually you, you do kind of can use it in game. In Forge, if you switch back and forth to Forge mode while holding the right trigger real quick, you will briefly see the monitor th that you're controlling fire like a very slight beam for like a second. And that is the beam you're holding now. I suspect this is like some leftover monitor beam weapon from Halo 3 that Guilty Spark uses to fire, to fire at you, uh, and for whatever reason, it's just this is like what's left of it. Uh, but it is technically just a focus rifle, and it's um, it, it fires, and in first person you do kind of see stuff, but it's uh, it's very janky. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure what its purpose is anymore, but it's most likely just left over. Uh, next up we have the Jackal Shield, and uh, it's actually, it, you know, it kind of changes between Halo games whether the Jackal Shield is a weapon or not. Uh, in Halo 2, that's when it first became a weapon. Uh, in Halo 3 though, I I actually don't remember if Jackal Shields in Halo 3 were weapons or not. I, I want to say they weren't, but off the top of my head I don't remember, I don't think so. But now they are in Halo Reach. Uh, and same thing with the Jackal Shield Major. This is obviously used by the Jackal Majors, and it's the it's the red version of the shield, and it is also a weapon. What's interesting is that by default, the uh, dual wielding is disabled on these, and I bet if I... It's just Halo Reach doesn't really have like proper dual wielding anymore. Like It could still be enabled, but it's not going to look right, I think. Uh, so I didn't really test it out for this, but it's uh, that's what the Jackal Shield Major is like. Next up, we have these skirmisher bracers. Uh, these are those little, um, like, arm shields that the skirmishers use in campaign. And again, these are wieldable weapons. No model in first person, but in third person, it, uh, it actually kind of works. It, it does look pretty interesting on the uh, on a Spartan, but they they serve no. I mean, yeah, they serve no practical usage as a weapon, though. 
Uh, I can't really do anything with it. This next one is actually interesting. Uh, so, this one has appearance of a sniper rifle on the ground. It says, like, you know, hold Q to pick up sniper rifle, or hold E to pick up sniper rifle. And when you pick it up, it says you picked up a sniper rifle. But you're actually unarmed, uh, at least appearance wise. So, what's interesting is that this is literally a weapon just to make you have no weapons, <laughs> which is kind of ironic. Uh, but even more interesting is that uh, I think the last Halo game to try something like this is Halo 2. During the uh, the tutorial on the mission, the Armory, uh, you're actually holding an invisible sniper rifle as well, just like in Halo Reach. I'm not sure where this is used in Halo Reach, but it's, uh, it's actually pretty interesting that they kind of did the same thing they did in Halo 2. Uh, next up we have the Spartan Knife. This one is, uh, well actually this, this one I think you see all the time, it's just, it's just a, I think it's the knife you use for the assassination, it's the exact same knife. Uh, but you, you actually never actually get to wield it normally, outside of assassinations. Uh, so this is actually what it's like to use the knife. You actually can't melee with it, at least I wasn't able to get it to by default. And the Spartan actually holds it in a very odd way, like an energy sword, but uh, that's not the proper way. Uh, in this case. And likewise, the sheath for the knife is also another weapon. <laughs> and it is also a weapon that can be made wieldable as well. Which is uh, pretty odd. But yeah, you technically can fight with uh, the sheath. <laughs> and you hold it exactly the same way you hold a knife, like an energy sword. So yeah, that's what it looks like in third person. But again, I can't actually melee with it. So it doesn't it's not really useful as an actual weapon in a game. Uh, and last up, we have the Falcon Sensor. So if you saw my video about the vehicles you normally can't drive, uh, there was one vehicle called the Falcon Sensor, which is attached to the Falcon at all times, but when I drove it, it didn't really do much. Uh, but, like I said, it's the weapon that actually was more important, and that is what's happening here. I have equipped the Falcon Sensor weapon, and you can see my reticle has changed to be that little arrow. So, what the Falcon Sensor vehicle slash weapon actually does is when you're in a Falcon and you get in, it gives you the HUD that we see here with that little arrow. And that's pretty much the only purpose of it. Uh, it might give you more elements of the HUD with the rest of the Falcon, but generally speaking, that is what the Falcon Sensor is meant for. It's just part of your HUD. And that's it. Uh, so I guess you do technically use it in-game, but this is what it's like to use it separately. And now we know more about its purpose. So there you guys have it. Not as many vehicle, not as many uh, weapons as there were vehicles that you normally can't use, but those are all the ones uh, in the game files and hiding in plain sight in Halo Reach. So you know some of them can be properly used, and some of them were never meant to be used and can't really do anything with them. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Hopefully you guys found this video to be interesting, and if you did enjoy it, then as always, make sure to leave a like, uh, leave thoughts in the comments, if there's anything else you want me to check out looking to, just let me know in the comments down below. But aside from that, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Bye, guys.